What's up everybody? I hope you're having a fantastic day. It is 104 degrees out today and it makes it a perfect day for me to get out and start looking around at some of the areas that I've had tagged because we've had a lot of monsoon action. We've had a lot of rain and this is the time of the year that I love to go out and take a look at things and see how the water's been moving things and, and look and see if things have been changing direction or anything else like that. Gives me a great idea on my research about where I want to go when it cools down and get out and do some really serious prospecting. Now, that also brought up a big conversation between myself and a couple of other people about lightning. Lightning striking areas where in the past and, and a, lot of, a lot of theories and ideas that the old timers would stand out and they'd stand out in the rain and they would watch to see where the lightning hit and if there was an area that got beat up by lightning, Rich Hill, this spot right behind me over my shoulder, which is the, a mine that I operated for a couple of years. This thing was opened in the 1800s and there was just a brief little blurb about the two guys that opened this mine. What they said is that they watched this place get hit by lightning over and over and over and that's what brought them out there. Rich Hill, there's been people that have talked about Rich Hill where they were looking at areas where they were just watching the lightning strikes and everything else like that. So is that really feasible? Well, Science will tell you. Well, that didn't go as well as planned. It is definitely a little bit hotter out here than I gave it credit for. So I'm gonna go back to the office, sit down, and let's talk about lightning strikes and gold prospecting. All right, gang, we're gonna pick up right where we left off before I was rudely interrupted with too hot of a phone. What I was getting ready to say about science is science would say that it is improbable that you could use lightning to locate ore bodies. That was until 1949. But to understand what happened in 1949, we've got to go back into history to 1555, when a Swedish author, archbishop, cartographer, Olus Magnus, was writing his book, The Description of the Northern People. And in volume six, he made a very, a, a very profound statement. I'm, I'm just going to read the statement to you. Nature itself shows by many symptoms where these ore deposits are located. They will be mainly found on mountains with rounded summits without ravines. When lightning strikes such mountains at the summit, at the side, or at the foot, it opens up the silver vein glinting in the clefts. And this is an observation that he personally made while he was working and understanding more about the northern people. Let's jump back to 1949. And in 1949, two physicists, uh, one of them by the name of Norrender and the other one by the name of Salka, they were looking and thinking about this and, and the effects of lightning. And so they wrote a paper. Now, the paper is going to be linked down below. It's only four pages, but it's a very, very interesting read about understanding lightning and what basically I'm going to say how they changed things to where it went from becoming improbable using lightning to becoming probable and possible. So I'm gonna to read to you their abstract. Several authors have maintained that the geological structure of the earth exerts an influence in the path of lightning from cloud to earth, and therefore lightning will strike in some places more often than others. That was the first part of their abstract. As they went down a little bit further, getting towards the last paragraph of their abstract, this is what they said. Now, following the same reasoning, Prospectors have looked for ore deposits in areas where local population reports that lightning strikes frequently. This method has been used especially in certain regions of Africa. So what they wanted to do was to prove that this was actually working. So from 1555, when Olus Magnus talked about this, all the way to 1949, there'd really been no true scientific studies done on this. So what they did is they made a great big model of the earth, a chunk of the earth, and then they started putting things in it. They were putting iron deposits, they were putting metal, and they got all of this done, and then they started inducing lightning. Well, their original findings was that it was just the, the rules of probability more so than anything else. So they took from that as it really was impractical and improbable, but they didn't stop there. They wanted to go even further. And what they thought of was, let's use positive charge lightning. Now, positive lightning 
has the net energy from where it begins at the top of the clouds. It is not regular lightning that most people will see where it's coming from the bottom of the clouds or the cloud-based lightning. It was coming from the top of the clouds and it holds its net energy. Now, positive lightning is the most powerful lightning that there is. It is absolutely the most dangerous and it is the most po powerful. Because it's positively charged, the average is that it's 300,000 amps and right around a billion volts. But it's also the rarest lightning that it is. It's up to 5% of all the lightning. So they started doing that and suddenly everything, everything changed. And in their paper, they wrote this. When experiments were made on the sand surface containing iron ore veins, the results were completely different. In the cases of geologically unequal surfaces composed of matter of different electrical properties, the conductivity of the iron ore vein is 300 times larger than that of the sand surrounding it. Now this is the kicker. The better conductor used in the model strongly influenced the path of lightning, but only in the case of positive polarity. So what they discovered is that if we had just normal lightning and we had more sand and then slight amounts of iron ore or different things like that, you had just the, the, law, the, the, the law of probability. Things are going to do this. But when they started taking iron ores and putting iron ores into these areas and then using more positive polarity lightning, then what happened, it became 300 times stronger and they were able to prove this. Now, what they actually did is as they would have a lightning strike and they'd look at it, they would use tracing paper and trace these lines out. And what they were discovering is that using positive polarity lightning, not only would it go down and hit the sand in the area of the ore veins, but if it was off of the ore vein, it would actually creep. The lightning would actually creep onto the ore vein. So this proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that positively charged lightning could be used to identify ore veins. So this goes all the way back to 1555 and proves what Olus Mangus wrote about in 1555. Let's talk about it in this day and age. I learned from my mentors 50 some odd years ago about using lightning for looking for iron ore veins. I've never believed that I'm going to watch lightning strike an area and walk over and find a vein of gold. I, I use it as a probability of finding a iron ore vein, as I was taught, which iron ore is going to be a lot of times associated with the gold bearing area. So if I discover a new iron ore area and it's in a gold bearing area, I have a higher probability of finding gold. That's just it. I mean, that's the rules. So I learned that from my mentor. He learned it from his mentor who learned it from his mentor. So this goes back. I mean, we're talking about going back four or five generations of gold mining. So does it work? Absolutely. Does it work all the time? Absolutely not. I'm going to say in all fairness that of all lightning strikes that I've used that where I have found a, an iron ore vein, I'm probably successful in 35 to 40% of those having appreciable gold. And when I say appreciable gold, I'm not talking about being able to go out and start a small common operation. But what I am talking about is being able to have enough gold that brings me back to that same area more than once. So the idea of using lightning is a great idea. You just have to understand that the lightning that you're working with, you, if you, and let's, and I'll break that down very, very quickly. If you're looking at an area and positive lightning is the rarest, it's up to 5%. So I'm looking at an area right in the middle of a storm and I'm counting lightning bolts and I've seen a hundred lightning bolts. Well, out of that hundred, five could be positive. Could be. Now, I look at the world a little bit differently, and this is something if you've ever been on one of my gold trails, I teach. It's about looking at the world with big eyes. And then we take our big eyes and we make them smaller and we make them smaller and we make them smaller to where we're focused in. I treat lightning the same way. I'm looking at an area, I'm looking at a storm, and I see lightning. I see lightning all over the place. Now, where the lightning is more concentrated, I'm going to kind of close that in. I'm going to look at it with, with smaller eyes. And then if I see an area that's just getting pounded 
in just one particular area. Now I'm going to put on my the tunnel visions on and I'm only looking at that. Now, when I'm looking at that, I'm looking to see if that's regular lightning or if it's positive lightning. I should say negative lightning or positive lightning because positive lightning comes from the very, very tops of the clouds and it comes down and it, it and it wants to find something that has a higher conductivity. So it's going to find things like the iron ores and so on like that. So those are the things that I'm looking for. And those are the things that you should be looking for as well. So when you're watching, when you're watching lightning, learn to look at lightning, but close it down to where you're looking for the positive lightning. You cannot mistake positive lightning for just the regular lightning, the lightning coming from the bottom of the clouds. Positive lightning, you can see it. It's coming from the very, very top and it's coming down. But learn to look for that positive lightning and be safe. Be very, very careful. Uh, the idea of standing outside in your slicker suit and watching positive lightning or watching for positive lightning is not the best idea. I mean, we're only talking about 300,000 amps and up to a billion volts. I've always said this, and I've said it kind of jokingly, but it's also very, very true. If I'm standing on an ore vein, and I don't realize I'm on an ore vein, and positive lightning hits that ore vein, I don't care how good the rubber boots I'm wearing are, there's a really good possibility that I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be standing there afterwards. So be safe. I mean, be safe. But look, lightning is a is something that's real. Don't discount us old crazy guys that are out there sitting in our trucks, writing down, making hash marks every time we see a strike of lightning. Lightning is a tool. Learn to use it. You learn to use it properly. Learn to look for the right thing. And more importantly, be safe. Be safe while you're doing this. And don't discount us old timers. We, you may think we're a little bit crazy, but believe me, we know a few things.